that he he had no, like I said, sense of luck. Um, you, you look at some of the statements he made. Um, five thousand people, men only, without not counting women and children, and they were hungry. And Jesus turned to his disciples with the same attitude. You would turn to your wife and say, "Oh, is that what are we eating this evening?" No special thing about it. The same attitude a wife would turn to her husband if he is the breadwinner of the house and say, "Oh, we need allowance for this week." With the same attitude, children will come to their parents and say, oh, what's for food this afternoon? Turns to the disciples and says, okay, so give them food. And then continues what he was saying. And the disciples looked at each other like, what's he talking about? Give them food. <laughs> it's like they, they have to give him numbers. That like, Jesus, are you, are you not aware that these are 5,000 people, not counting women and children? Even if we went to the market and started buying, we still can't do it. Even in the natural, it's not possible. <clears throat> if we went now and you know started buying stuff, it would still be difficult to do. So why are you saying that? And Jesus looked at them and the same attitude. You see, that's the attitude of peace. A person who has unleashed the force of peace and you know, Jesus had kept the commandments. So he knew that by covenant, needs, if something becomes a need in his life, there's a force of supply to meet that need. Anytime there's a need in his life, that's the, that's the nature of peace. That all that has to happen is for something to become a need. Peace will make whole. So the moment it became necessary to feed the 5,000, the Bible tells us that it became necessary. The Bible was emphatic to let us know it became necessary. Why? The, that's what, why the Bible said that they had been there for three days and they were now weak. So it's no longer just a desire. It's no longer, oh, I want to throw a party. It is now necessary to feed them. Every need is becomes the attack of peace. Peace attacks need. So when something becomes a need, that's why you need to save. You see, when you save, you create needs that peace will have to fill. But when you don't save, then you spend your savings to meet the need. But if you have a policy that says 10% of my income will go into savings, 20% of my income will go into, when, when there is a need, because you saved, now there is something you have not been able to supply. Peace will have to supply that. Peace will have to meet that need. But if you don't save, for instance, the same thing goes with tithing and giving. When you give, let's say you have 2 million come into your hands and you tithe 200,000 and you gave to your pastor 100,000 and you gave to the poor 100,000 and you gave to your parents another 200,000. I'm not giving you percentages to use. I'm just mentioning these figures at random. And by the time you are done, maybe you are left with 1,300, 1, 1.3 million. And then, and that month you have certain needs. And let's say needs arise that come to about 2 million. And you are like, if I have not given my tithe and all of these things. And then let's say you now save again, uh, a 10%, 200,000. And now you have 1.1 million. You're having 1.1 million. And, and the, the need for that month is 2 million. You see, what you've done is that you've created need. You have your savings. You have your spiritual investments in your giving. You have your natural investments in your saving. But you've created a need, which if you didn't give or save, you don't have any need. Peace will just be like this. You have all you want. You have all you need. But when you when you give and save, you've created a need. Now there is a need for some things that you are not going to go to your savings to meet. You're not going to go to your, uh, 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 you're not going to withdraw your tithe to meet or spend your tithe to meet. That need has to be met. Hallelujah. That need has to be met. Peace is at work. Okay. 
So Jesus said, feed them. And then they, they went ahead and said, we don't have, they told him, we don't have what it takes. And he said, what do you have? He said, five loaves and two fishes. Peace plus five loaves and two fishes will feed 5,000 people. Plus, if there were 100,000 people there, it doesn't make any difference to peace. I want you to see how that peace was at work in the life of Jesus. And apart from that, you see when they came to him and they said, you need to pay your taxes. And he and Peter were alone. And there was, the, 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 the officials came and said, taxes. And where is John? Where is Judas, the 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 the, the keeper of uh, uh, um, their finances? Judas was nowhere to be found, and it was just him and Peter. And they didn't have the cash on them. It wasn't that they were broke. Judas was not there, and so Jesus turned to Peter just to show. I believe that that whole experience was to show the force of peace. Jesus turned to Peter and said, "Go." to the river and fish. And the first fish you will catch, open its mouth, there will be money in it. In other words, he's trying to say to us, peace will find a way to get the need met. Peace, the force of peace, this covenant of wholeness that you have, and means that God will have to find a way to, even if it means using a fish, God will find a way to address the need and meet the need. And there, there were several options left to Jesus, but God picked the one that to show that this is me at work. This is more than just the natural at work. There's a force that is at work. That's the whole, that's the whole reason for a, a, a go and you know fish. It's to say to us, there's more at work than the natural. This is not normal. This is a force of peace at work. And you can also see that force of peace in the negative, on the negative side when Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane became us. In that garden, he was troubled. He sweated like great drops of blood, the Bible tells us. In the Garden of Gethsemane, that was where he said to God, "Is if it is possible, let this cup because the cup was there for him to drink. He was at the garden, he drank the cup. And from that garden, he became us. So he became sin. And he said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. And it wasn't possible. God wanted him to take our place. And he said, however, not my will, but thine be done. And the moment he said that, he took our place. He drank the cup that was meant for us. And he took our place and he became sin. And you can see the change from that moment forward. The peace, that my peace that he spoke about had left for him and was now available for everyone who will put their trust in Jesus. Because he said, my peace I am giving to you. My peace I'm giving to you. That peace left him and you could see the shift. This was the same Jesus that in Mark chapter one, the Bible, verse 35, Bible says a great while before day, he went to pray. And the Bible said the disciples were looking for him. And when they, they were looking for him, and then when they found him, they said, all men seek thee. This was the Jesus that used to hide from, from uh, 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 multitudes. He used to hide from them. He will go find this. He'll be looking for a solitary place just so he can pray. He will say, please don't announce this miracle. I don't want them to know I'm in the city. This same Jesus that everybody was seeking, this same Jesus was left alone. He lost his relationships. He lost the multitude. He lost his disciples. It was a reversal of the peace. It was instead of peace, trouble. He began to experience trouble because he became sin. And from that moment forward, look at all the things he lost. He lost the multitude, he lost the disciples, they scattered. He lost even his mom. He had to say, uh, 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 mom, behold your son. He handed the mom over to John. He lost even the clothes on his back. It was a reversal of peace. Even the clothes on his back had to go, had to be taken from him. They couldn't even let him 
have one single boxer on him because my peace I give to you. You and I today are not earning that peace. It is ours by righteousness. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. This peace that is ours is no longer earned. Jesus took our place so that we can have his peace. He, we have his righteousness, therefore we have his peace. This, right, this peace that we have, this wholeness, this force of wholeness, this covenant of peace is unleashed in the new covenant by prayer. That's what we read today. That's why I read you this verse of scripture. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will, bottom line, move into action. It begins by guarding your heart, causing your heart not to be troubled, guarding your heart and mind, and then begins to affect everything around you. You see it with Jesus. It, you know, when you look at Jesus' mental, uh, 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 his mind, look at the mind that said, feed the 5,000. It was the peace that was guarding his mind. Thoughts of not enough. Thoughts of, oh, where will we get it from? Didn't occur to that mind because there was a guard. There was a peace of God that was guarding it. The consciousness that I have, I have the commandments. Therefore, there's a covenant of wholeness and God cannot break covenant. So there has to be a way to meet that need. There has to be a way the need for the need to be met. All I have to do is make it my need. Now the 5,000 people that need to be fed because I have now offered to feed them has become my need. And so my peace will have to take care of that. But look at the mindset. Why he, he, he spoke and thought the way he did. Because the peace of God mounted God and garrison over his mind. All right. This peace that is unleashed by prayer, that's the, so the first thought, I want to put it in ways, I've been saying a lot of these things, I'm hoping today to put it in ways you can refer to, reference, all right, so the first thing I've, I've tried to communicate, the first thought is that in the new covenant, we experience peace by praying, all right, and so we just read it now in this verse of scripture, let me read it to you in another passage, in another verse of scripture, in James chapter 4 and verse 2. He says, you lost and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And you see the Bible reason for why you do not have. I told them today in Kampala in the morning, morning meeting, we had Sunday morning meeting. I said to them, I said, Christianity has certain disadvantages. And I, I put it in quotes. You know, I know you don't want to hear that, but there are certain disadvantages. And this is one of them. It says, you lost and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain because you belong to a kingdom now that this is not how we get. Losting, just desiring something someone else has. Somebody has a car. You are angry with him. You are envious of him. You want his car because he has a car. That won't get you a car in the kingdom. It can get you a car in the devil's kingdom. He said, you murder, you kill and covet and cannot obtain. Because that's not how it works in the kingdom. If you are a believer, you don't get by, by killing someone and taking what he has. Once you do that or try to do that, it starts working against you. Because you, you, you belong to a different kingdom. And the culture of your kingdom is the culture of your life, regardless of where you are planted. You're an ambassador where you are. The ambassador of America in Nigeria or in Kenya or in Uganda is still bound by the laws and principles of his home state. All right. So you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. You know, there are companies that are in the U.S. doing business in Africa that were sanctioned some years back and made to pay billions simply because they bribed. Whereas in Africa, 
That is the way you do business. But even though it's wrong and shouldn't be, but you know, how many companies in Africa bribe? If, if you refuse to bribe, they will laugh at you and say, what's going on? Yeah, you don't know what you're doing yet. But when they bribed and their nation found out, they were sanctioned because that's not the way they do things. In the kingdom, you don't lust and murder and covet to obtain. You don't fight and war with people to obtain. It says in the kingdom, you ask. So you see how that connects with Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing. I can literally say, don't murder. Murder for nothing. Covet nothing. <laughs> I, I, I lost not for anything. F fight for nothing. War for nothing. Ask. You do not have because you do not ask. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be open. Everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. So asking is how what is missing is supplied. Asking is how what is broken is fixed. Asking is how what is lacking is brought forth into your life. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. All right. So that point is covered. Let's go to another point. We've said that asking, praying is the way you experience peace in the new covenant. All right. But many of you will say to me, Pastor Noel, I have been praying. In fact, I have prayed so much that nowadays when I go to heaven, when I go before the throne of grace and say, and start, try to ask, Angel Michael will say, you again. You know, some of you have prayed and prayed and prayed. And, and I know while I'm saying asking is the key, your mind is saying to yourself, what I've been asking that can't be just that. It's just asking. I have been asking. Okay. So let's take a step further into that. The Bible tells us what makes our asking efficacious. What makes our asking result-oriented? So in 1 John 3 and verse 2, so let me make the point and then give you the scriptures. Praying is made efficacious by two things. And before I say these two things, think about how easy this means, what, how easy this is, and what this means. Praying is made efficacious by two things. If you found out that your, the solution to your problem is just two things, you, you ought to feel like, okay, yeah, yeah. Don't have, that's not a serious problem, right? If I said to you now that um, every one of you, all it takes is two things to be a doctor. Two things, you wanna be a doctor in Africa or in the US, just two things. Two things you need to know. You will be like, bring it on. I'm gonna be a doctor by tomorrow. <laughs> because it's just two things. Of, of course, being a doctor takes more than two things. So in other words, it takes more to be a doctor than to have your prayers answered. Because it's just two things, we are told. Just two things. That means it takes more to do a lot of the things. Most of the things you have done in your life took more than two things. To be where you are now, if you're an engineer, if you're a mechanical engineer, if you're whatever you are today, it took more than just two things. But to answer prayer, to receive answers to prayer, the Bible says two things. So let's look at them. In 1 John, what are those two things? The Bible says, believing in the name of the Lord Jesus and walking in love. Two things. Believing in the name of the Lord Jesus and walking in love. Every one of us should be having answered prayers, answered prayers, 24-7. Because it takes only two things. Believing in the name of the Lord Jesus and walking in love. So let's look at that. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. It says, and whatever we, whatever we ask, we receive. He always gives, whether you're walking in love or believing or not. When, once you ask, it will be given. But receiving is the issue. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we ask. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, before you start going off and saying, no, you mean we keep the law? I thought you said, no, 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 he's not talking about the law here. The next verse says, and this is his commandment, 
that we should believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. Love the way he asked us to love. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus as he told us to and love as he told us to. If anyone, I'm going to make a categorical statement. If anyone is able, if anyone believes on the name of the Lord Jesus and walks in love, his prayers would be answered. Is this supported by other passages? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So let's look at them. John chapter 15 and verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Of course, his words abiding in us is how we come to believe in him. Remember, our faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. His words abiding in us is how we come to believe in him. And look at it here again. So there is a, a condition. There is something, not a requirement, like God is saying, I'm not going to give it to you because your, my words are not abiding in you. No. His words abiding in you is how you make the withdrawal. Remember what I said earlier? How you earn something is different from how you withdraw. Something is earned. It's in the account. To make a withdrawal, you write your check and you present. The writing of the check is not to earn it. It's to take it. The same way love work, uh, love work, love work and believing on, in Jesus is the way you take. So your heart being abide, the word of God abiding in you is a necessary part of having your prayers answered. First Corinthians 13, let's look at the love side and answered prayer. First Corinthians 13 and verse one, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. You could as well just be saying, twinkle, twinkle, little star. All through that period you are praying. If you will not make the decision to walk in love. You have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. That's the, the, the whole tongues that you're speaking. If you have not love. Okay, so this is not, and that's why Jesus said, if you find, if you have your gift, you want to give and then at the altar, leave it at the altar, go and sort. If you find that your brother has something against you, deal with the love issue. All right. So praying is made efficacious by believing on the Lord Jesus and walking in love. All right. Let's take, let's make, make another point. The third point, which is walking, I mean, believing on the Lord Jesus. How does that happen? I'm going to make a statement now. There's some, some teachings I'm, I'm going to do on faith in the month of October um, when we're doing the total immersion and fast-track spiritual growth. A new look at the concept of faith because we have, we have, we need to redefine faith so that people will stop saying, ah, but I've been believing and nothing seems to be working. And some of us are believing and getting results. But, so we're looking at what's the difference between our believing and their believing or so-called believing. And we're going to address those things. One of them is what I'm going to say now. Believing on the Lord Jesus happens, please hear my word, not by word. I know you're going to say, but Bible says, so listen to me first. Not by hearing the word, but by binging on the word. Faith comes not by hearing the word, but by binging on the word. And many of you know what binging is. All of us have binged at one time. All of us. Every one of us. I, 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 I'm, I, I struggle to find one person who has not binged. You see what you do when you watch a series. Bridgerton. 24. That's called binging. One hour will run through. Netflix will show you. Next episode, it starts building up. It, it, you know, it's ne next episode is about to play, and then it starts playing. And then after one hour or so, it tells you immediately next episode is about to play, and then it starts playing. Then after one hour, next episode. Some of you have been so much that you slept off, and the Netflix kept on playing, and you woke up in the middle of the night, and 
continued for 30, 40 minutes, one hour, slept off again, woke up, and it's just plain. It, you think you slept off at episode two and woke up at episode nine. You see, that's called binging. Binging on the word of God is the only way that you come into, into the place of faith. I wish I had a lot more time, but we will have it next month to talk about faith. Faith needs to be redefined. And there are deeper revelations about faith that we need to operate in. So binge on teachings, the gospel. Binge on, on teachings on the gospel like that. When it comes to the word, people say, I have heard that. Oh, I have, personal, I have heard that. No, binge, binge on it. Let me show you that that is scriptural. Everything we say, we have to prove from the word of God. Always make that your policy. Anything someone says to you, let them show you from the word. John chapter 8 and verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. See, they, they already believed, right? If you abide in my word, if you abide, that word abide is menu. Menu, to, 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 to live in something. If I, the word used for dwelling in something. If you live in my word, if you abide in my word, if you make my word where you stay and then visit other places. You visited Bridgerton for one hour, but you are back in the word. That's where today now, coming to Kampala, this is where I'm staying. I've spent more hours here, multiple more hours here than any other place. Earlier today, I went to church. I was in church from 10 o'clock till around two o'clock. Four hours. Before going to church, I was here from the night before till that 10 o'clock. Think about that. That's almost like 12 hours. Let's say from 10 which I was here earlier than that, but let's say from 10, the night before. And then after I came back, you know, from that, from church at two o'clock, I've been here since that two o'clock till now, that is uh, 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 eight o'clock or almost nine o'clock, the time here. So I've spent another seven hours. So I have given other places a few minutes, a few seconds, a few hours, but this is where I live. If you will make the word of God where you live, that's what Jesus is saying here. If you abide, menu, dwell in my word, not, not visit it, binge on it, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We quote, they know the truth, make you free, without reading what he said they should do about knowing the truth. I say, but I know I'm righteous. Do you really know you're righteous? Do you know that? Is it? Do you know it where it, it has possessed you? I have a covenant of peace because Pastor Noel said so. Do you know that? Have you heard it? Is it abiding in you? And the truth shall make you free. Let me give you another one. James 1 and verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. He who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues. Would you like to know that the word continues here is the word parameno. The one we read earlier was just meno. This is now parameno. It is to remain, it's still the same idea of remain, of tarry, of be permanent somewhere. That's the word continue here. James 1 and verse 25. So look at this. He who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. That's talking about the word of God. And is not a forgetful hearer. So wait, how do you not be a forgetful hearer? Continue. Look at it there. The guy who continues... It's not a forgetful hearer. The guy who continues will be a doer of the word. It's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. 
Do you want to be a doer of the word? Continue in it. If you continue in the word, it will get to where you are doing it. If you continue in the word, don't worry about what is going on now. It will get to where you are doing it. If you are struggling with, with something the Bible says don't do, continue in the word. Keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. If you are struggling with alcohol, I'm telling you, decide that you are going to abide in the word. You're going to stay in the word. Gather like, you know, 20 messages and play them one after the way you do Bridgerton. Play them one after the other, one after the other, on the gospel, the gospel, not just any message, the, the message of Christ. Play them over and over and over and over and over. And I'm telling you right now, you will end up doing the word. You will break the power of that. This one, Bible says, will be blessed in what he does. He will move from, oh, I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. No, he'll be blessed in what he does. He'll be blessed in the, in the thing in, in his hands. In other words, this person will end up having the blessing manifested in his very actions. His, his business, his children, his family, the things he is involved in. He will experience the blessing in them. That's not talking about, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings. Just talking about it's manifesting in the things I am doing. How do you move from, I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings, to I'm seeing it manifest? How do you move from that to that? It says, continue, parameno, dwell, dwell in it. I've always said, whatever is keeping you from dwelling in the word is killing you softly. Even if it is something good, dwell in the word. Believing on the Lord Jesus comes by binging on the word. Lastly, or almost lastly, another point I want to make is we talked about, we said prayer that gets results is built on two things, believing on the Lord Jesus and loving one another. So we've talked about how to believe on the Lord Jesus. Let's talk about how to love one another. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love. So this is a call for them to walk in love with each other. It's telling them, look at those words, lowliness, gentleness. Lowliness means humility, gentleness, long-suffering, bearing with one another in love. All of those things are to be done in love. So this is what saying to them, walk worthy of the calling with which you are called by walking in love. There's a calling. You walk worthy of it by walking in love. But he now tells them how to walk in love. Walking in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, the bond of peace, the bond of making whole. Many of you here, how many of you here feel a bond with me in a general sense? Yes, you're not my wife, you're not my husband, I'm you're not your brother, but if you heard that I passed away, God forbid, you'd be like, what? No, it will hurt you. You feel like something is taken from you. How many of you feel a, a connection to me, a bond with me? I'm watching, I'm watching. I'm watching for those who will not respond. Um, please coordinate or remove anyone that did not respond, anyone that didn't say yes. Just remove them immediately. Okay, I'm joking. Many of you do. Many of you are, you know, feel a bond with me. Why do you feel that bond? Why do you feel the bond with me? What do I have? I've not done anything. I've not given you money. I've not combed your hair for you. I've not baked you before. I've not done some form of I've not paid school fees for you. No, you know, why? Because I'm supplying something. I'm, I'm bringing as much as is in my power. I'm contributing to your wholeness by teaching. This, you wake up in the morning, you are feeling all messed up. You show up in the devotion. And God moves through me and addresses the very thing you're going through, addresses the very thoughts in your heart, addresses the very situation. That which I supply to you bonds us. 
that which you supply to me. And I'm telling you, there are people in every church, no matter how much you want to spiritualize it, there are people in every church that the pastor feels exceptionally connected to and very, very bonded to. Why? Because of what they also supply to the pastor. There are those who keep on inviting people to church, inviting people to church. Uh, you know, they, when they are coming, they are coming with a bus load of 10 people, 15 people, and the pastor is going to feel very connected to those people because they are supplying something. There are people who will constantly say, pastor, I need your bank account details, and then they spend money to the pastor. Constantly, constantly, there is a, com a connection. And, it, you know, and you might want to over-spiritualize it, but there is a bond that supplying to the need of one another creates. This it happens everywhere, not just in church. It happens between a husband and a wife. When a husband supplies resources, Bible says, for instance, wives, husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge, knowing or recognizing that they are, they are the weaker vessel. So that means it applies both ways. Because in certain things, the wife is weak. In certain things, the husband is weak. When you are in a relationship, there are certain things your husband is weak in. You're supposed to supply that. That supply is what bonds you guys. When that supply is not being, that's why when you have a family, a, a marriage, where maybe the wife withholds sex, or the man has to like walk and walk and walk and walk and walk, now, there is some things you need to do as a man. I understand that. But walk and walk, you know, the wife punishes the man with sex. After a while, they start the bond starts breaking. The bond is no longer, the love and attachment to each other is no longer as strong. When the man is failing to supply what he needs to supply to the wife, the same thing happens. But when they are supplying it, you know, instead of complaining, why don't you all, why, why don't you ever do this? Why don't you ever do that? Why is it that you leave this here? Why is it that you always leave this? Now, if, if, if that is his weakness and the wife supplies that and then the husband looks for what the, the, is the wife's weakness and supplies that, recognizing that they are fellow heirs of the grace of life, he said their prayers will not be hindered. Why? Because they are walking in love. And the requirement for answered prayers is believing on the Lord Jesus and walking in love. Real love work is supplying what is missing. It's not just forgiving one another when they when when they sin against you. No, the that forgiving one another is a subset of supplying what is missing. Forgiving one another is a subset of supplying what is missing. Because when you forgive someone, you are supplying their peace of mind. When someone has hurt you and their conscience is troubling them, and they're like, "Please, I'm sorry," and then you forgive them, they are peace. So you supplied something in forgiving, but that's not all you supply. You are meant to supply what is missing, broken, or lacking. So, walking in love is majorly by making peace. It's majorly by making whole. The peacemakers are the love walkers. The last thought, and we close, is this. Peacemaking, therefore, the peacemakers shall be called, Matthew 5 and verse 9, the sons of God. Those who walk in love. Those who make whole. They will be called the sons of God. Why is that? Why will they be called? I've never thought about that. Why would they be called the sons of God? Not that they will be sons of God. Because if you're born again, you are a sons of God. You are a son of God. Why would they be called the sons of God? Because it will be evident. It will be evident. What will be evident in the lives of peacemakers? That which makes them to be called the sons of God. I know I'm going round and round, but I'm trying to get you to think. What will make you call someone sons of God? God-level results. The God life, yes. God-level results. God-level performance. God-level results. Superhuman performance. Superhuman results. Today we call it supernatural performance. Supernatural results. 
Hmm. Now we are back to where we started from. Wholeness that passes understanding. That's what makes people say, you are a son of God. When you think of the concept of sons of God, you start thinking in Greek mythology of people like Hercules. They never really existed. It's a, it's a myth. But you get the concept of a son of God. Hercules, Achilles, um, different people that, that in, the, in Greek mythology, the gods came down and slept with natural women, human women, and they gave back to offsprings that were human, but had superhuman results, had superhuman performance. When they throw the javelin, it will go beyond where normal human beings own will get to. If you try to cut them like Achilles, except you touch his heels, every part of him, you try to stab him, it can't. That's superhuman. So well, we are not a myth. We are really sons of God. We are really supernatural. We are really superhuman. We are really more than the ordinary. We are really extraordinary. But they won't know it until we become peacemakers. So start making whole. Make your life a. Look at all the spaces you exist. Follow the Romans 12, 18 rule. Romans 12, 18 rule. What's Romans 12, 18 rule? It says, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Make men whole, make people whole. But look at the rule. If it is possible, as much as depends on you. Where are the areas, the places you exist, where it is possible and depends on you? Husband, wife. If you have a husband, it is possible to make your husband whole. And it depends. A part of his wholeness depends on you. There's a part of his wholeness that depends on you. There's some things he can't supply to himself and, or shouldn't supply to himself that you as a wife should supply. There are things the wife should not supply to herself, the husband should supply. You and your children, the children to the parents, the spouse to the spouse, you to your pastor. Your pastor shouldn't spend all day you know, you know, I'm not saying this just for myself, but I, I've said I'm not going to be apologizing for saying what the word of God says. Many of you are, are saying, wow, 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 wow. And it's not just me. Some of you, your pastors thought this morning and you were like, wow, wow, wow. You know, but do you know what it took for them to put that together? Some of them had been preparing all week to say what they said to you. Don't just wow. Yeah, say the wow, because that's also supplying something. But go, perhaps let him that is taught the word. Say wow to him that teaches him. No. Let him that is taught the word. Say beautiful message to him that teaches him. No. We have changed it. Say the beautiful message. Encourage the pastor. But then go get a seed. Go get something precious. And say, pastor, can I get your bank account? I wish people would stop asking me for my, 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 my phone number and start asking for bank accounts. There will be a lot more, a lot, it will be a lot better, right? Instead of sending me a text at night and saying, Pastor, no, at 11, 8, 11 p.m., hey, Pastor, just thinking about you, that was a good message. And you are a lady and you are sending me a text at 11 p.m. telling me it's a good message. It will be better that you have that conversation with my bank account. Have that conversation with my bank account, not with me. <laughs> 11 p.m. at night, an alert, three million dollars. Boom! I'm, I'm, you know, whatever. I'm just giving you an example. But we need to start talking in such figures, right? Three million dollars. Bam! Hit my account. That kind of, of. I'm telling you, the the feeling of bond is stronger than when you send me a chat at, at, at. Um, at 11 p.m. and saying, just thinking about you. All right? Praise God. 
Hallelujah. And that applies not just to me, but, you know, we have pastors. You know, that person who teaches you the word. You are obligated. It's one of the spaces you exist where you can make whole. And a part of that pastor's wholeness depends on you. Use the Romans 12, 18 rule. Where, where else? The earth. Make the earth whole. Walk in love with the earth you live in, the society you live in. You know, love enough to witness and share the gospel. Love enough to supply what you have, the skills and talents you have. Love enough to supply the gospel to those who are lacking and don't, don't know it. Make whole. Make it a pattern. Let it become your life. And then binge on the word of God. I've just delivered to you two things that you do not need 10 million anything else. You need just these two things. Make the the the, the path, make it a pattern where every place you exist, where it is possible and you can make whole, you are making whole. Where it is possible and depends on you, make whole in those places. And binge on the word of God and then pray. You're binging on the word and you're making whole will make your prayer powerful. And your powerful prayer will change your life. It will make peace to abound in your life. Did you learn something? Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you praise. I pray that you will help us live out what we are learning in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. It's time to give. It's time to give. I know I talked about giving to your pastor, but this seed we're sowing now is going into the church, not to your pastor. And so bring in the tithes and the offerings. It's also part of making your church whole, all right? Making your church whole. There's just a lot we need to do. And for instance, the fast track spiritual growth from tomorrow is going to be blasted in Uganda in Kenya, in the UK, and in Nigeria, and in the US. We're going to boost them with a lot of dollars, all right? Now, people are going to be impacted, you know, but you know, we're only able to do that because some people have committed to make their local assembly, to make Covenant Light whole with their tithes. Some people just experience covenant light. Some people make covenant light whole. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. They will have superhuman results and performance. So it's time again to make whole. Bring ye the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Okay. Let's pray over the seeds. The details for how to give are posted in the comment section. Make sure you do give. Let's provide. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we give today, we declare boldly that it is given to us good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. And we thank you for the privilege to make whole that which is making us whole in the bond of peace. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and give. I'm going to hand over to the coordinators again to wrap it up and... Um, and close this meeting with some announcements. Stay tuned. Don't go yet until they are done. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Apostle. Thank you so, so much. We have been blessed. The requirement for answered prayer is just two things. Believing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and working in love. I'm so grateful to God that I'm here today. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, thank you to all the C CGOC members and thank you to all the leaders from the other installations. Thank you, everyone. Uh, please do not forget about the devotion tomorrow morning, bright and early. Let's all join in and transform also starts. Um, it's also on Tuesday evening at our different times in our locations. Uh, please invite someone for your transform meetings. And also the link for the fast track spiritual growth is being shared. 
please use the link to invite people. And when you see it on your social media handle, please like it and share with people. And um, I'm sure that we'll see results even as we do that in Jesus' name. As um, on our social media handles, Covenant Light handle is um, posting stuff whenever you see it or make it a point of duty that whenever you, you go out to look for it on the social media, like and share, put it on your WhatsApp status, put it on your um instagram on your facebook share it with your friends so that you know the more we like it the more we share it it goes further and god bless us as we do the so in jesus name uh, i think that's all the announcement that we have today i'd like to say thank you to everyone for joining in and god bless you have a lovely evening thank you all Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Man, thank you.